Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. I hope you're well, having a great day and we are going to continue on today with this team on your screen in front of you right now which is the Dustman, Necrozma, Xerneas, Incineroar, Mega Kangaskhan, Amoongus and Tapu Fini and of course that Dustman, Necrozma will Ultra Burst into Ultra Necrozma within this team. We've got Calm Mind on it, Earth Power and Photon Geyser. Just to recap everything, the Xerneas is pretty standard. The Incineroar is there for support with the Snarl. We've got U-Turn, Flare Blitz, Fake Out, and then we've got the Mega Kangaskhan as well. We've got Fake Out, Crunch, Double Edge and Raw on it. Amoongus is going to be there for redirection support. Anti-Trick Room measure as well. It's got Spore, it's got Clear Smog for opposing Xerneas threats as well. So we've got double kind of Xerneas checks there, they're not the most solid, but hopefully the Dustman and Cosma help put off the majority of them as well. And then Tapu Fini, we've got a little bit of a quirky set on it, it is there mainly for support though, but we have got that psych up option on it that we can take advantage of with our own Xerneas or opposing Xerneas or anything that does boost up in front of us. So it should be a lot of fun to continue on with. I hope you've been enjoying the episode so far this week. If you've missed any of those and you'd like to go back, check them out. You can go back up here, I'll link a card for you to check those out and then come back and check out today's episode of course as well the team as always is down in the description below there is a poker paste and a roll paste of the team for you guys to check out try out as well get you started in the ultra series and talking about getting started in the ultra series we have a bunch of guides on the channel right now for you helping you get a better understanding of the ultra series because it's just started so we've got an introduction guide we have got a primal kyoga primal groudon and today we'll have a mega rayquaza guide with an ultra and a Crossman guide out tomorrow so they'll all be linked in the description below i hope you enjoy them and i hope they are some benefit for you there are a lot of sample teams within every single guide to get you started in the series so at the end of the day i hope they are beneficial for you all and that's the purpose of them to get you started and give you a good step in going into this new format so without further ado guys let's get into it and as always if you enjoy this content please leave a like on the video make sure you do subscribe to the channel for more pokemon content and do leave your comments down below because at the end of the day I don't love anything else less, or I should rephrase that, I don't have anything more than hearing from you guys, because it's just the best thing about doing this content, interacting with you, hearing your thoughts on the teams, everything else, so please leave your comments down below and I'll, I'll make sure to get back to each and every one of you, but saying that, we've got our first opponent of the day, so let's hop straight in. So we're going up against Tony from Japan, and he is playing Kangaskhan, Groudon, Salamence, Incineroar, Tapu Fini, and Ultra Necrozma. Oh, Dustman Necrozma. It's going to be Ultra Necrozma, though, isn't it? So you've got the, the Ultra Necrozma, Groudon combination. You've got Tailwind support from the Salamence, then the Kangaskhan is supporting Fake Out support as well, alongside that Incineroar. Got the Double Intimidate there that's going to be a little bit hindering for some of our more physical attackers on the team. And then the Tapu Fini support as well, Icy Wind support, Heal Pulse support. Lots of different methods of support on the team. I think one of the things we can identify here is if we can get Azernius boosted up, uh, we'll be in a decent position going forward because we can hit that Ultra Necrozma for good damage, the Salamence, the Mega Kangaskhan. We've got to watch out for things like Haze from the Finny, Roll from the Incineroar, and that Kangaskhan as well. And we're not going to be able to hit that Primal Groudon very hard, so we need to rely on other methods in our team. What do we want to do, though? Because I think one of the things I'm going to do is lead off with Incineroar and Tapu Finny. And I think we will have Ultra Necrozma in the back with our Xerneas. And I think... I always feel bad because I'm leaving Kangaskhan out a lot of the time, but for the most part, it's because I want that Intimidate support and the Fake Out support, which Incineroar really does, and it makes me question the Kangaskhan a lot of the time if it's the right Mega for this team. But we will soon find out, I guess. We've got another week of playing this team all together, so it's going to be good to find out, and I'm sorry. I haven't selected a music, so we're just going with the generic standard one in today's episode, but I hope it's all right for all of you guys out there, and uh, I'll make sure to pick something a little bit different going into the next one. So we've got Groudon and Tapu Fini coming out for my opponent, and we are going to see the Misty Terrain activate from the opposing Tapu Fini, I think, or was that ours? And we do get the Intimidate support onto the Groudon, which is the most important thing, we'll probably see it Primal Revert as we do right now on screen, so... Seeing Primal Groudon burst out onto the scene. I'm right. Okay. I think we need to reposition ourselves a little bit better than what we are at the moment. I mean, we could Icy Wind. 
a primal groudon um one of the things that i do feel like i could do is just go for a fake out into groudon and get ourselves uh dust mean the crossman on the field the problem with that is they're taking an icy wind in the process which i imagine is what this finny will want to probably try and do here it's just i want yeah, I'm going to do it because I need to start and try and cycle the Intimidates on our side of the field to try and nerf this crowd on as best I can. We'll get Necrozma out. Crowd on protecting. Yep. I mean, we can't risk not faking it out here, though. That's the thing. We get punished so hard if we just deny. Uh, okay, we're going to see a haze. That's fine. That's fair enough. Okay. Here's coming out. Alright, well we'll get Tapu Fini onto the field now. I think the one thing that I do worry about a little bit is potentially the um, Swagger support for that opposing Groudon. Is that Finny? I'm going to Ultra Burst and I'm going to just protect because then the next time we've got access to that Z move which we can potentially hit that Groudon with. And Sinner are all going to come out. Hmm. Okay. It's not the end of the world. Because we'll get Incineral out of here. Problem is though for us, we're protecting now and the fake out's active for that next turn when my opponent brings the Incineral onto the field. We are gonna ultra burst though. And we have got Incineral on in the back that we can bring in for the Intimidate support the next turn if we want to, which is kind of obvious is what we do on that Necrozma slot. Precipice Blades is coming out. It's going to be hitting neutral, no intimidate support there. Oh, what's he doing to Finny? Oh, Finny not taking that too well. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, we've got fake out support now, which is not ideal for us at all. Um, We can go Icy Wind, I think, and we'll have to bring in Incineroar. It's pretty much our only option at this stage. It's almost like we want Kangaskhan at this point in the match where we can bring it in to support the Necrozma a little bit better. Um, but then again, not protecting that last turn means, you know, Necrozma is going to be... It's not going to be able to pick up the KO onto Groudon. But we could have got an Earth Power off there, but then the Precipice Blade is going to do a lot of damaging. Uh, Necrozma is not going to be in the, the best of spots. Okay, so we get Incineroar in. Get the Intimidate onto this Groudon, which is the most important thing for, right now for us. Oh, Sword Stance. There we go. Party is starting. <laughs> so it's back to plus one. We do get the Icy Wind, which is just helpful. We'll probably see the Incineroar just go for a U turn, I'd imagine. Yep. We do have access to fake out this next turn, which is helpful. Let's have the Finny coming back out onto the field. Okay. Right. Hmm. I think we need to switch out into Necrozma once again now. Because then we can Z move the guard on the next turn. And we need to fake out. The thing is here is whether the Finny switches out for the Incineral once again. And we're kind of in that same position as we were a couple of turns ago. Let's see what my opponent goes for. Because even an Icy Wind here wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. So we've got the fake out. It's an Icy Wind. Okay. We do have access to the Z move. Groudon does flinch. Okay. We should be able to take the Groudon down, but I think my opponent probably is aware of this. So I would I would think the Groudon probably protects. And then the Incineral comes in on the Finny slot. That would be my best bet. But to kind of cover things, I guess we could go for the Light that Burns the Sky into the Groudon. Switch back into our Finny. And keep Incineroar on the back, so we've got that Intimidate to bring him once again. Okay. I'm going to see the Incineroar come in, I think, now. Uh, 
Okay. Could have went Earth Power there. Would have been a safer option. Hopefully we don't see a Moon Blast from this Finny. Because that's something else that we have to consider as well. Now, obviously with the Dragon type in that we've got. And we're not going to have to cut anything out here because we've gone into a dog type. And we're not going to be doing anything. So. There we go. Go on. Roll Necrozma. But it's not going to happen. Denied. Heal Pulse. Okay. Expecting maybe an Earth Power here. Which we, we get away with slightly. We do get away with. Um, probably want to get I'm going to get Xerneas onto the field now and I'm going to bring Incineroar out as well I'm going to try and get the Geomancy the Geomancy gone but I might not want to go for it straight away I want to try and chip this, this Tapu Fini down slightly because we want, if we're going to attack it, we need to be making sure that we are going to be picking up the knockout onto it. It's a real tussle this game, though. <sighs> so I think what we'll try and do, depending on the board position of my opponent's board the next turn, is maybe switch the Incineroar we'll straight back out and just get dazzling gleam damage. Okay, we're going to see the type of finish switch out now. Groudon hit the field once again. Going to get the sun back up for my opponent. Okay, what's this Incineroar going to do? Is it just going to U-turn, maybe? Probably does U-turn, I'd imagine. Hmm... Just faking out. Okay. We've actually got a real good opportunity to go for the Geomancy here. We will take a Flare Blitz from the opposing Incineroar, but at the same time, we can get this Geomancy off and fake out the, the Groudon. Which I think I'm going to do. Because we should be able to, yeah, crowd, I'm going to switch out. We're going to get Finny in, I think. Tapu Finny, yeah. Incineroar will probably U-turn if it hasn't got Roll. Which it likely hasn't because of the Finny having access to his. This is where we want... Well, we can't get around the, the the haze really this next turn, but if we can start to get damage onto things, that's the that's the main thing. But we definitely see, I feel the Groudon coming on that Incineroar slot now. Okay, Snarl. I mean that's that's way better than than the U-turn, because now we can U-turn out, and that's what we want to do is try and reposition, so try and stay ahead of the the game. Um. I'm going to Dazzle, because then that'll put Finny in range, and just U-turn out. Put Finny in range for Necrozma to, to potentially pick up a knockout. Okay, and Sinner, we're going to switch out. Groudon? Salamence! Ooh, plus one Dazzling Gleam. I don't think you're going to be taking that very well. No, no, no. Even if we see a Haze here. And I kind of don't mind us seeing a Haze. Yeah, Salomon's going to switch out. I know I get knocked out, so that's one problem gone for us. Here's, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. We'll get Ultra Necrozma back in now, I think. Um, yeah. Because then it almost invites the Incineroar into the field. Rather than the Groudon, I think. Because an Earth Power Dazzling Gleam or an Earth Power Moon Blast is probably enough. Yeah, so there's the Incineroar. Which allows us the room to get our Incineroar into the field once again. Um, we could actually go Geomancy here. 
It's a bit cheeky. But we could go Geomancy and switch into Incineroar. The only problem is if we see a U-turn out into Groudon, that's where we'd waste our turns, our resources, a little bit by doing this. So we got to, if anything, the Incineroar can't U-turn here. If it U-turns, then we're in a bit of, bit of trouble. I think the U-turn's coming. <laughs> I think it is coming out. There's an icy wind. Yeah, and I think the Groudon comes back onto the field now. And then, yeah, we, we count it our force then to fake out the Groudon. Yeah. And, like, that's the one thing we, we didn't want. But we forced the Finny to go for the Haze the next turn. Hmm. But I guess we could take advantage of that by actually getting the Crosma out onto the field now for Xerneas and just faking out the Groudon. But we can't do that, obviously, because we're going to Geomancy, aren't we? Um, I mean, one of the things we could potentially do is fake out Tapu Fini. We would lose Incineroar though, and I'm not really keen on losing Incineroar right now. Um, yeah, let's fake out the Groudon. Let's not do anything overly stupid. We've already been a bit over. Okay, we're not actually going to see that. We're going to see the Incineroar come in. The type of finny, we will get the fake out and we'll be able to complete our geomancy with our Xerneas. Okay. We're only on plus one speed, but it's still alright because, like, this next turn we just switch Incineral out to Finny, sack Finny. And then we can get Incineroar back in if we want for that, that fake out support, depending if the Tapu Finny's out on the field or not. Um, but if the Groudon takes down the Finny now, then the Incineroar is kind of denied a U turn out, which gives us a little more, a little bit more advantage going into the next turn. So Precipice Blades does connect. This will take Finny down, fortunately. But like I say, it does deny my opponent that U turn pivot out. Mm -hmm. So now we get our Incineroar in. Get that Intimidate. Oh! Oh, we get Ultra Necrozma in. And we could Earth Power and Dazzle. Although I kind of want to keep Necrozma till the very end. And I know the Groudon probably protects this next turn, but... The Intimidate's really important for Xerneas here. And we can just Dazzle. I think it's probably the best thing to do. Razzle Dazzle. And go for the safe fake out into Groudon. And we'll see what my opponent tries to do. So I'm going to switch out. Probably see... I don't know if we'll take down the Finny here. Ah, uh, we may do. We may do. Probably see the Groudon protect. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Yep. And we get the Finny. Okay. Now the Groudon's locked in minus one. So we've got an option now where we can potentially put it down to minus two. Or we can sack Incineroar here. Or we sack Ultra Necrozma. But I feel Ultra Necrozma is going to be the thing that helps us secure this victory. 
uh, I am going to go for a protect and I'm going to U-turn out into the incineral. And we know the incineral has got Snarl, so it's probably not got um, Darkest Lariat. So it doesn't threaten Anacrosma as much as we kind of think it may. Precipice Blades, we may even take this. Come on, NC, take it! Like a champ. Nah, no way. Flebits. Okay, now we bring in the Crosma. And I think we dazzle and earth power that incineral. Let's just see, the Groudon is minus one, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what we do, because the incineral can't protect here. And as long as we get rid of the incineral, then we can deal with the Groudon with Ultra Necrozma from Dazzling Gleam damage. And if the Groudon protects here, then we've got the double up the next turn. So that's definitely the best route for us. Precipice Blades can miss. It hasn't missed in this match so far. This has been a slog of a game, though. It's been a really nice one for us to kick off with today. It's been a really, like, really solid game. But, uh, and I still think there's places where we could have cut corners to make this a lot easier for ourselves. Guard on protecting, so there we go. We're going to be able to lock this up. Dazzling Gleam is going to definitely put this uh, Incineral into range. It probably won't proc a berry. Shouldn't be enough to proc a berry. Ooh, Earth Power might not actually be enough, you know. It's enough! Because Ultra Necrozma is the best. <laughs> Such an over-exaggeration, I'm sorry. But I get a little bit hyped when we get these situations. Right, we can Moonblast finally and then go for that Earth Power. And that should lock up the game. And very good game to my opponent. Massive, massive shout out to Tony. A really good game for us to kick off with today. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to go straight into our second one. And probably be a little bit of a longer episode today, but... I think you guys enjoy it, right? You guys enjoy it. So. Oh, it's nice when we have a game like that and we can kind of come out on the better side of things. There's a few moments there where I was like, mm, maybe we don't win this one. But uh, you've got to keep going in these, these matches and just try and carve out board positions that kind of give you the advantage and identify where you can kind of win a match, really. I think that's the big thing and... I think my opponent switching out the Finny was the, kind of their biggest downfall and not hazing us because it put us in such a kind of dominating position with our Xerneas then from then on where they kind of weren't able to deal with the threat of the Xerneas as well as they wanted to. But it's just one of those things. Anyway, we'll go into our next one because we've got our next opponent. So, we are going to be playing a Kyogre, Rayquaza, Cortana, Tapu Koko, Stack Attacker and Swo Is it Swoobat? Is that a Swoobat? I think it is. Psychic flying type. Can't remember its ability. It's got some mad ability though, because I always remember Jamie Boyd and Ben Kiriaku making a crazy Swoobat and Ayaligo team. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think what it did. I don't know what it did. I know it's pretty fast. I'm sure it's like base 116 speed, I think. Or maybe even faster than that. I'm not sure. Could be slow. Who knows? Anyway, we've got Ray Rayoga here. We've got Trick Room support from the Stack Attacker. Probably Tailwind support from that Swoobat. Maybe Tailwind support from the Cartana. Cartana's likely to be Assault Vest anyway. Right, what are we going to do here? I think Ultra Necrozma is decent. But then again, we've got to be careful around that Tapu Koko. Um, do we want to bring Kangaskhan here? Or not? I'm going to bring Kangaskhan for a change. Because I think it can still have some utility in this game. Although, we're probably better off with the Incineroar, to be honest, because of that Kartana more than anything else. Um, I've got... Do we go Ultra Necrozma? Ultra Necrozma, yes. We'll go Ultra Necrozma. And then we'll go... I think Tapu Fini is really important here. We're benching Kangaskhan once again. Is it the right choice? I don't know. It's that thing, it's just every time I'm like, okay, I want fake out support because it helps us get board positions, it helps us get some room. I need Intimidate because of the threats here, especially Cartana. If we don't bring Incineroar, we kind of struggle a little bit to maybe hit it for super effective, especially when you're relying on Xerneas a lot of the time. We need it for Rayquaza. So it's kind of like, well, we need Finny as well because you want that switch in. 
Kyogre's out in the field, you want that alleviation. And Tapu Finney can switch him pretty easily on, on things. So it's really difficult to kind of get make do with Kangaskhan. I don't know when Incineroar's in the team. This is what makes me think maybe another Mega's the answer here. But who knows? We can we can approach this in as the week goes on. I guess. Right. We can fake out Rayquaza, and we can Ultra. Burst and Earth Power the stack attack out because we don't want to allow it setting up a trick room. That's the one thing we don't want to allow it to do. So that's what we will do. I mean, if we catch the stack attacker with with the Earth Power, I'll be very surprised for one. If my opponent allows us to do this, could hold a sugar berry. We could see the red switch out here. Any combination of things could happen, but I'm not too worried about the stack attacker really right now. Because the Earth Power checks it completely. I don't think it can actually survive it. So we're going to switch out. We're going to see Kyogre hit the field. Hmm? Might just be seeing a trick room. Literally just, just I think the stack has probably gone for a trick room. Is it sashed? Because that would be a little bit of an issue for us. Especially not faking it out. But it might be, it might be scared of the fake out double into it. But then we're leaving the Rayquaza kind of like alone, which we never really want to be doing in this situation. So we are gonna Ultra Burst into Ultra Necrozma, Ultra Instinct. We get a little bit of chip onto the Kyogre with that fake out, and we are gonna get that Earth Power. No Sugar Berry. No Sash. I mean, it's a new format, so we'll give we'll give my opponent a little bit of room there because you know if you haven't played this format before, you're not really to know that Ultra Necrozma carries Earth Power. Like if you're coming into brand new, you you don't know that, and that's the sort of thing that will catch you out. But this is why you play on Battle Spot and practice before going to tournaments, so you don't get caught out in tournaments, places that these matches do matter. This Battle Spot doesn't really matter too much. This is a good thing to relay over to you guys that are going to tournaments this year. Get all of your bad bad games out of the way on Battle Spot. So you have your good games at a tournament. Learn from your bad games and go from there. So um, we definitely catch my opponent off guard, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate. The Ray going to come back in. It is going to be in a nice position going into this next turn for sure because um, although we can throw out a Z-move onto it, which is kind of tempting to be honest. We do leave that Kyogre kind of unchecked. Hmm. What to do, what to do, what to do. Uh, maybe we bring in Finny. I just don't want to allow the Rayquaza to get a sword stance off here. That's my biggest gripe. I I'm going to just go for the Z-move. Light that burns the sky. Here we go. It's probably Sashed Rayquaza, though. You've got to imagine it probably is. But it may not be as well. Might be Life Orb. I do like Life Orb Rayquaza. It hits like a truck. Like, literally like a truck. Turns into a truck and just runs things over. No, it is very good though. It's just the Sash gives you that little bit of extra security. Especially if you go on a Sword Stance set as well. And we are going to see it Mega Evolve. And bring that Delta Stream to the field. Depends what it does here. I don't know if Sword Dancing is the right play here. I think just attacking. If you if you're if you're sashed, maybe Sword Dance, but I think you're probably better off just going Dragon Ascent. Thing is with the stack attacker out of the way, it opens the door completely for Xerneas to come in. Into the Rayquaza it is, and it's gonna be is it gonna pick up the knockout? That's the thing, it's gonna be sashed though, isn't it, right? Wow, it's not sashed, and we pick up the knockout. This is going to be a quicker game than what I thought, so it probably is. Life over, it could be banded, or um, a number of things. We're going to see a water spout. Thankfully, because we are a dragon type and the rain's not up, we don't take as much damage as we probably would have previously. My um, opponent down to their last two Pokemon, so we should be able to kind of clean this one up pretty, pretty easily, I think. So, we'll see. Not going to be straightforward, but I think we're not too bad a position right now. Katana, okay. Katana. 
Right. Um, hmm. Well, we can icy wind. We can probably heal pulse. We can bring an incineroar. I don't really want to bring an incineroar when Kyogre's out in the field, though. That's the only thing. It's kind of like we want to deal with the Kyogre, then we can deal with the Cartana with incineroar. But then if we're not dealing with the Cartana, then it can get carried away with beast boost. So it's not massively straightforward for us. Um, I think what we'll do is icy wind for show, and I'm gonna just go earth power into the Cartana. Cartana is probably a salt fest, and the match is just forfeits, and my opponent forfeits. I don't know if you should have forfeit there, but knowing what we've got in the back, maybe it's just a bit too difficult. But we definitely caught them off guard. That's that's basically what happened. Turn one, and you're gonna have that in these early formats as well. You're gonna get caught off guard by things and you're not expecting those things. So if it does happen to you, at the base of it, don't feel damn beat about it. Just learn from it, make sure you take a note of it and then move on and just make sure you don't fall for it again because that's how you improve obviously going forward. And if it is something really difficult, you can sit down and think about it, draw it out, think how can I get around this? What can I do? And you can change your team appropriately and things like that. But we're going to end things up there, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We've had two crazy games. One really long one, which I really enjoyed. And then that bit of a short one there, like we've just mentioned. But I hope you've enjoyed both of them. Thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to reading all of your comments down below as soon as uh, you've watched this episode. Hopefully you leave comments. It would be great if you do. Um, but if not, I hope you've just enjoyed the episode. Have a great rest of your day. And I will see you all for the next episode very soon. So until then, take care and bye-bye. Yeah.